welcome back to Evil Shenanigans World Headquarters and Training Center. And today I am hand sanding um, the raindrop pattern Damascus knife. So let me get this down. How do you turn the damn thing around? All right, so here we go. So last night I went to 180 going in a straight line this way. All the belt marks go up and down just the way you hold it on a belt. So what I found, and I know this isn't new information to a lot of people, but you got to alternate the directions of your hand sanding so you make sure you get all the lower grip marks out. It's easier to see them. Um, so the, like the belt lines are going this way. So my first pass with hand sanding is going straight up and down the blade. Now I'm at working on 220, and so I go at like about a 45. And so what you're looking for is any scratch lines that are going the direction of your last pass to make sure you get them all out. And it's kind of hard to see them on camera. There's a couple I saw like right here. Yeah, you can barely see them. So I like to, cause you gotta have, sometimes you gotta look at it like with a different angle of light what I've found but I like to take a sharpie and kind of circle where they are so you don't lose them I think there's some right here too and pretty much this whole section I just kind of started there but so it kind of gives you a reference point you can go back to and make sure you don't lose them um, it's helpful if you have a light source that you can move from one side or the other, um, get you a good uh, rest, you know, something to, to sand up against. I've got, you know, paper towels or whatever, uh, shop towels taped to a two by four that's screwed to the bench. Uh, and then you've got to have something to back your sandpaper. Don't try to hand sand it with just your hand. Um, I use this one because um, I get a little bit more leverage going down on it pushing against the blade and i've got a piece of steel with some leather glued to it so it gives just a little bit and that's helpful for you know going up over that ridge for a plunge or you know it kind of conforms a little bit to the shape of the blade so i'll kind of finish i'll do the last few passes with this one um a foam block is pretty helpful too it's a little bit squishy but it's still fairly firm um, I've got a piece of micarta I'll use that sometimes too but you got to have something to glue your sand or you know have your sandpaper to um, I've been using the it's from red label abrasives but it's the sticky back paper uh, they only had two grits available when I ordered it so I've got 180 and 400 um, so I'm still using the little bit cheaper stuff that you buy at the hardware store. But I've started spraying um, spray adhesive to the back so it'll stick. Makes it a little easier to hold on to. But anyway, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I'm probably going to take this up to about 600 and etch it. Um, so, you know, my 220 lines will go like this. I'll go to 400 and go like this. And then the last pass at six will go back straight with the blade. And you got to make sure you get all your little swirlies and the J hooks. Like if you, if you sand in one spot, kind of like this, you're not going to go perfectly straight. You're going to end up having like a little swirl. It looks like they're called J hooks. They look like little J's. So you got to make sure you get all those out. So the last few passes, you'll start all the way back where you want your, your finished surface to be, and you go on a straight line all the way down the blade. You do that several times. Um, that'll help get all that out. But all right, so this is a little update. And if I remember, I will try to film some more of this as I've made some progress. You kind of see going up through the grits. I don't do a whole heck of a lot of hand sanding on stuff, but with Damascus, you got to pretty much. Um, I kind of like the 
a little bit more rugged style blades or maybe I'm just lazy and I don't want to hand sand. Either way, I kind of like just leaving a belt finish on a bunch of them or, you know, just rough force finish. But, all right, there we are so far. Oh, I forgot one couple more tips. Um, use Windex. You gotta have some kind of lubricant on there for hand sanding. Um, helps keep the grit from piling up. Gives you a little bit easier, uh, smoother finish. Um, the other one is you need to treat your sandpaper like it was all given to you for free. As soon as it quits cutting, you need to tear it off and throw it on the floor. Um, and if at any point you see some grit lines from the lower grit in there and you think to yourself, oh, that's not that bad, I'll just get it out on the next higher grit, you need to stop and then slap yourself in the face. You're just causing yourself more work or you're going to end up leaving them and the knife's going to look like crap. So just take your time. There's no rush. Well, maybe there is a rush, but you can't be in that much of a rush if you're going to do this and do a good job. So take your time. Make sure you get all the lower grit lines out before you move up to a higher grit. And use Windex for your, your liquid. Don't use WD-40. Um, especially if you're going to etch this blade later. You don't want oil having been on it at all. You're just making it harder on yourself. So Windex is cheap. WD-40 is kind of expensive. It'll be less of a mess for you. But... Okay, so there's a couple more tips for you. Back to hand sanding. All right, so now I've got both sides up to 220. Uh, it's a fairly even 220 finish. It's a little rough, but that's all right. Um, so now I'm going to go to 400. The important thing is all of the lower grit scratch lines are out. So I'm going to go to 400. And you can see these lines are running more or less this way. So I'm going to go this direction. And then my last pass with six will be in straight line with the blade. Um, usually at this point, part of me, my brain says, hey, let's go ahead and etch this, do a little test etch and see what we're dealing with. Um, and I've found in the last few I've done that that makes it way harder to do the next couple of grits. So I'm going to resist that urge and we'll just see what we got when we see what we got. So anyway, there we are for now. And hopefully... Here in a little while, we can do a short little segment on what it looks like when it comes out of the acid. That'll be cool. All right, welcome back. 900 years later, we are hand sanded up to 600. All the way up uh, past where the handle is going to stop on the little cross O area. Uh, it does have plunge lines, but I've kind of blended them in because I like it to be a little smoother on a kitchen knife. Uh, I've got the clip point thingy all sanded out and you can kind of see it right here. Um, up here on the spine, it's not rounded, it's not flat. There's a very subtle um, crest there. So it has a peak right in the center. Come on, get in focus knife. There it is. So you can kind of see it. Uh, the plan is to carry that all the way back um, once the handle's attached across the tang. That may or may not happen, but we'll see. Um, so the next step, um, I have washed it, kind of degreased it, and I just put thumbprints on it right there. So I'll get those out. Uh, and then we're going to go into the acid. So you want to make sure you get all your all the gunk off of it from sanding it, um, you know, from touching it and everything. You don't want any oils on the blade or it's not going to etch right. Um, let's see here. It's my handy dandy etching wire. So you'll be real careful when you deal with this acid. Um, 
This is ferric chloride that's in this tube down here. And if you get one drop of it on you, it will immediately kill you. It'll melt your hand right off. Not really. So we're gonna just give it a little dunk in the acid and we'll pull it out and kind of see what we got going on. Uh, just make sure there's no like weird spot on it or anything where it's not gonna etch. Here, hang on. All right, here we go. All right, let's do our little inspection. Man, that looks pretty cool. All right, so it looks like everything's pretty even. see any that's too dark you guys can't see it get it down in the light there we go so I'm not seeing any spots that aren't etching aren't taking the etch at least uh, so that's after just a couple of seconds in there and you still see the raindrop patterns that's a it's really cool. All right. I was kind of curious how that was going to work. I was afraid maybe I'd have to sand it too far down to shape the knife. But it looks like everything worked just fine. So, all right, so I'm going to let that soak in there for a little while. Um, so basically the, the knife is made from uh, Eddie CRV2 and 15 and 20 and 15 and 20 is a high nickel steel so it resists the acid um, and so it's going to stay basically where it is and the ACRV is going to eat away a little bit and will be the darker colored metal so then we'll go back and kind of knock the tops off and get them all shiny because once it sits in there and soaks for a while pretty well the whole thing will be black um, I usually do it under running water and I'll hit it with you know I don't know, 1500 grit, maybe 2000 grit. And it'll polish up the 15 and 20, which is gonna be a little bit higher level than the ADCRV. And so then you should be able to see that pattern like just really jump out. So, but it looks like everything went well. I'm excited. So I guess thanks for watching. Um, that was our hand sanding tutorial. Uh, I was trying to think, oh yeah, there was one other, any dandy tip I had, um, I was thinking while I was sanding, um, don't try to sand the whole blade at one time. Just do little sections at a time. Um, make sure your paper, if your paper will just wear out faster, that's what it seems like to me anyway. It's like it wears out faster um, if you're trying to sand the whole thing as opposed to just work a couple little sections. You know, maybe an inch or two at a time, get those cleaned up, move forward, move forward, move forward. That seems to work better. Um, see, buy good sandpaper, have a sanding block, have something uh, firm, attach your knife to it so it's not flopping around. You can't hold it in your hand and hand sand it. Um, you know, and go through sandpaper. As soon as it stops cutting, throw that junk in the floor, get rid of it. And try to get really good sandpaper. The sticky back kind is better. Um, the tacky spray I put on there, um, it kind of it kind of worked okay. Um, the Windex was wanting to break it down pretty fast, so you'd have to fight it. But anyway, so there it is. So far, so good. Um, hoping to get the handles attached to it this weekend and get it shaped and finished up. Um, I'm supposed to have some tools or components for tools showing up today, um, so I'll be making some tools. Wrapping up a couple, at least two more projects that are going to Blade Show. Um, maybe a third. I don't know how I feel about that just yet, but we'll see. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.